Hello, welcome to the Ocean County Library as we celebrate Black History Month. Our presentation today is called Madam President, The Legacy of Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm, Early Days. African American Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm was born on November 30th, 1924 in Brooklyn, New York as Shirley Anita St. Hill. Shirley's parents, Charles and Ruby St. Hill, immigrated to the United States from Barbados during the 1920s. They both settled in Brooklyn, New York, where they met, fell in love, and married. Their marriage was a happy one, and Shirley was the first of four daughters born to the family. When Shirley was just four years old, her parents sent her and her sister Odessa to live with their maternal grandmother in Barbados. Shirley lived in Barbados for seven years before returning home to her family who had settled in Bedford-Stuyvesant, a neighborhood within Brooklyn, New York. As Shirley grew up, her parents instilled the importance of education and the value of having a career path. Shirley heeded their advice and excelled at all her studies in school. Shirley enrolled at the Girls High School in Bedford-Stuyvesant, where she became Vice President of the Honor Society. Although Shirley received scholarship offers from Vassar and Oberlin Colleges, she enrolled in Brooklyn College in 1942, which was closer to home and did not charge tuition. Shirley Chisholm, Passion for Education and Politics. During Shirley's time at Brooklyn College, she became focused on children's education and politics. At college, she joined two campus organizations, the Harriet Tubman Society and the Political Science Society. Both discussed politics. This led Shirley to become an active member in various local community organizations in her neighborhood of Bedford-Stuyvesant, where she learned the issues concerning residents. In 1946, Shirley graduated cum laude from Brooklyn College with a degree in sociology. After graduation, she began working as a teacher's aide for a daycare center in Harlem, a neighborhood in Upper Manhattan. Shirley's experience at the Harlem Daycare Center led her to enroll at Columbia University's College for their Early Childhood Education graduate program. While working and attending Columbia Graduate School simultaneously, Shirley fell in love and got married to Conrad Chisholm in 1949. The couple tried to have children, but Shirley suffered two miscarriages before she found out she could never have children of her own. In the face of heartbreak, Shirley persevered and graduated in 1951 with her master's degree in early childhood education from Columbia University's Teachers College. Shirley Chisholm, Education and Political Careers. Soon after receiving her master's degree, Shirley accepted a director's position for a daycare center in Manhattan's Lower East Side neighborhood. She would go on to manage several more daycare centers that focus on early childhood development. Shirley's dedication and excellence in managing daycare centers at an exceptional level led her to receive a position as an educational consultant for New York City's Division of Daycare in 1959, a position she held for five years. In 1960, as Shirley became frustrated with the Democratic Party, she co-founded a local New York City political group called Unity Democratic Club with the goal of getting more African Americans and women into political office. In 1962, her political group was successful in getting a member elected into the New York State Assembly and two other members elected into the Democratic Party's District Committee. In 1964, a seat representing the district of Bedford-Stuyvesant became vacant within the New York State Assembly. Shirley's Unity Democratic Club members encouraged her to run. Shirley's political campaign was successful and she became the second African-American woman to serve in the New York State Assembly. During Shirley's four-year tenure as a New York State Assemblywoman, she helped sponsor over 50 bills that supported minorities, the working poor, women's rights, and educational opportunities, all platforms she always cared about. Some of these bills included the Search for Education, Elevation, and Knowledge, SEEK Program Bill 
which offered scholarships to low-income, college-bound minority students. Expanding unemployment insurance benefits to cover domestic or personal workers bill. Allowing women teachers in New York State to maintain their tenure while out on maternity leave bill. In 1968, Shirley hoped to represent the 12th district of Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn in the U.S. Congress. Her opponent, Republican James Farmer, dismissed Shirley based on her gender and called her the little school teacher. This political strategy backfired since 60% of the registered voters in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood were women and led Shirley to a landslide victory. With this, Shirley became the first African-American woman to serve in the U.S. Congress. In 1969, nine African-Americans, including Shirley, were sworn in at the Capitol and became at that time the largest group of African-American delegates ever to serve in Congress. Once in Congress, Shirley immediately went into action when she spoke out against the Vietnam War in her first floor speech as Congresswoman. Her direct demeanor, in addition to her gender, made her stand apart from the other congressional representatives. These traits were a source of strength for Shirley when she stated to the press the following about her role in Congress. I have no intention of just sitting quietly and observing. I intend to focus on the nation's problems. In 1970, Shirley wrote her first book, an autobiography titled Unbought and Unbossed, which detailed her experiences on the campaign trail, her first term in Congress, and her life. The following year, Shirley became a founding member of the Congressional Black Caucus, CBC, and the National Women's Political Caucus. Her influence and high profile made her one of the most well-known female public figures, a fact backed by the Gallup Poll's 10 Most Admired Women in the World of 1971, which ranked Shirley on that list. All of these events propelled Shirley to her next political adventure, running for President of the United States. Shirley Chisholm, Presidential Run. On January 25, 1972, Shirley made the announcement in Brooklyn, New York that she was running for President. Her passion can be heard in Shirley's candidacy speech. I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the Presidency of the United States of America. I am not the candidate of Black America, although I am Black and proud. I am not the candidate of the women's movement of this country, although I am a woman and I am equally proud of that. I am not the candidate of any political bosses or fat cats or special interests. I stand here now without endorsements from many big name politicians or celebrities or any other kind of prop. I do not intend to offer you the tired and glib cliches which for too long have been an accepted part of our political life. I am the candidate of the people of America and my presence before you now symbolizes a new era in American political history. With this announcement, Shirley made history by becoming the first African-American woman to seek a major political party's nomination for the United States presidency. Shortly after her speech, Shirley traveled across America seeking support to become the Democratic Party nominee. Her campaign slogan was called Unbought and Unbossed, which referenced Shirley's stance advocating for people and free of political rhetoric. It also tied back to Shirley's autobiography book of the same name. Without any major funding or press coverage, Shirley was able to get her name on 12 primary ballots. Later on that year, during the Democratic National Convention, Shirley received 152 delegate votes at the event, which was a strong showing. Ultimately, she lost the Democratic Party nomination for president to Senator George McGovern at the convention. McGovern eventually lost the presidential race to Richard Nixon. Though Shirley was defeated, her historical and groundbreaking campaign was made into a documentary called Shirley Schism for President by German filmmaker Peter Lidenhall. 
1973, Shirley released her second book, The Good Fight, which detailed her experiences of her historical presidential campaign bid. In 1974, Shirley ran for re-election of her congressional seat and won. During her time in Congress, Shirley played vital roles in saving and protecting the Office of Equal Opportunity, OEO, authoring a minimum wage bill, and becoming the first woman ever to serve on the House Rules Committee. In 1978, Shirley divorced her husband, Conrad Schism. She married New York State legislator, Arthur Hardwick. In 1982, after 14 years of service in Congress, Shirley retired from her seat to focus on the health of her ailing husband, Arthur, and to have a more personal life. Shirley Schism, Life After Politics. In retirement, Shirley taught political science and women's studies at Mount Holyoke College, a women's college in South Hadley, Massachusetts. In 1984, Shirley co-founded the National Political Congress of Black Women. She also campaigned for civil rights activist Jesse Jackson during his presidential runs in 1984 and 1988. In 1986, Shirley's husband, Arthur, died from cancer, and the following year, Shirley retired from teaching. In 1993, President Bill Clinton offered Shirley the appointment of U.S. Ambassador to Jamaica, but she ki kindly declined the position, citing her poor health. Shirley spent her final years living in Palm Coast, Florida, and died on January 1, 2005, at the age of 80, after suffering several strokes. Although Shirley passed, her extraordinary life continues to inspire many people around the world. Shirley Schism, Fame, Honors, and Legacy. In February 2005, PBS aired a Peabody award-winning documentary called Shirley Schism 72, Unbought and Unbossed, directed by Shola Lynch. Lynch screened the documentary with Shirley just before she passed. After seeing the film, Shirley told Lynch, I want to be remembered as a woman in the 20th century who dared to be a catalyst for change. In 2015, President Barack Obama posthumously awarded Shirley America's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 2019, New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo opened a new Shirley Schism State Park in Brooklyn in honor of Shirley. As we have seen, the impact and trailblazing spirit of Shirley Schism continues to grow in popularity. Her legacy will continue to inspire new generations, especially women and minorities, to reach for their dreams. A lasting testament to the talent and genius of one of America's greatest women political leaders. Shirley Schism, Sources. All the information presented today was found using the Ocean County Library's databases. These databases are free to use at home or in the library at any of our 21 branches with your Ocean County Library card. Shirley Schism, Image Sources. All the images shown in this presentation can be found at the following sources. Shirley Schism, Image Sources, continued. All the images shown in this presentation can be found at the following sources. Shirley Schism, Materials at the Ocean County Library. Check out the Ocean County Library's catalog to find books, articles, and films about Shirley Schism. To search our catalog or access our databases, please visit the Ocean County Library's website at www.theoceancountylibrary.org. Thank, thank you, and we hope you've enjoyed this presentation at the Ocean County Library. Support public libraries, like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.